Hello everyone and welcome to a reception. In this video, we will solve the ICSE Physics 2018 paper. Now, check us out on Facebook, we go by the same name. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button and do share it with your friends. Without further ado, let's get started. We start with section 1, 40 marks. You have to attempt all the questions from this section. We start with question 1. A1. State and define the SI unit of power. The SI unit of power is what? Not that what? What? And the definition is simply 1 watt is the power when 1 joule of work is done in 1 second. That means 1 joule per second. Okay. Number 2. How is the unit horsepower related to the SI unit power? Very easy. 1 horsepower equals 746 watt. B. State the energy changes in the following cases while in use. Number 1. An electric iron. Well, very easy. Electric energy to heat energy. Number 2. A ceiling fan. Similar to the above, electric energy to mechanical energy. Okay. Number C. The diagram below shows a lever in use. Effort over here, load in the between and fulcrum over here. To which class of the levers does it belong? It belongs to class 2 lever because load is in the between. Now, number 2. Without changing the dimensions of the lever, if the load is shifted towards the fulcrum, what happens to the mechanical advantage of the lever? Let's do that. So this is the diagram given, load is in the between. What is it asked? Without changing the dimensions of the lever, the load is shifted towards the fulcrum. What happens to the mechanical advantage of the lever? What is mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is effort arm by load arm. So as you can see the distance between effort and fulcrum is the effort arm and effort and load uh, sorry fulcrum and load is the load arm. So this is mechanical advantage effort arm by load arm. If the load arm is decreased then mechanical advantage will definitely increase because according to this mechanical advantage will be inversely proportional to load arm. Therefore if load arm decreases mechanical advantage will increase. That's our answer. Moving on to question D part 1. Why is the ratio of the velocities of light of wavelength 4000 Armstrong and 8000 Armstrong in vacuum 1 is to 1? Now you know the speed of light in vacuum is 3 into 10 to power 8 meter per second. Now the speed does not depend on wavelength or frequency. It depends on the medium. So in the same medium, light of different wavelength will travel at the same speed. So that's your answer. This is why the ratio of velocities of light of wavelength 4000 Armstrong and 8000 Armstrong in vacuum is 1 is to 1. Simple answer. Which of the above wavelengths has a higher frequency? Now frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. So the lesser wavelength will have the higher frequency. Therefore, the light of the wavelength 4000 Armstrong will have a higher frequency. Moving on to question E part 1. Why is the motion of a body moving with a constant speed around a circular path said to be accelerated? As you can see, this is a circular motion. Now the speed may be constant but the velocity will not be constant because the direction of the body keeps on changing. When in a circular motion, the direction is taken according to the tangent. Therefore, the velocity will be variable. If the velocity is variable, then the acceleration will be variable. Hence, a body moving with a constant speed around a circular path is said to be accelerated. Okay. Moving on to question E part 2. Name the unit of physical quantity obtained by the formula 2k by v square where k is kinetic energy and v is linear velocity. Let's do it. So this was the formula given where k is kinetic energy and l is linear velocity. What is the formula for kinetic energy? k is equal to half mv square. We will simply put this over here. So therefore 2 into half mv square divided by 
b square 2 and 2 will get cancelled out b square and b square will get cancelled out so we get m what is m m is mass of the body we move on to question 2 part a the power of a lens is minus 5 diopter you have to find its focal length and name the type of the lens now what is focal length focal length is 1 by power which means 1 by 5 I am just taking the 5 not the negative, the negative denotes what type of lens it is. So which is equal to 0 0.2 meter or 20 centimeter. Name the type of the lens, concave lens. Because concave lens has power in negative. Okay, number B. State the position of the object in front of a converging lens if number 1. It produces a real and same size image of the object. That means object is placed at 2f means 2 into focal length number 2 it is used as a magnifying lens when object is placed between focus and optical center then the lens is used as a magnifying lens now number c State the relation between the critical angle and the absolute refractive index of a medium. That's very easy. Mu is equal to 1 by sine IC, which is equal to cosec IC. Okay. Number 2. Which color of light has a higher critical angle? Red light or green light? Now, critical angle is directly proportional to wavelength. That means the light having the higher wavelength will have a higher critical angle. Now you all know red light has a higher wavelength. Therefore red light will have a higher critical angle. D part 1. Define scattering. Scattering is the process of absorption and then re-emission of light energy. That is the simple definition of scattering. D part 2. The smoke from a fire looks white. Which of the following statements is true? Number 1. Molecules of the smoke are bigger than the wavelength of the light or number 2. Molecules of the smoke are smaller than the wavelength of the light. Number 1 will be the correct answer. We move on to question E. The following diagram shows a 60 degree, 30 degree, 90 degree glass prism of critical angle 42 degree. You have to copy the diagram and complete the path of incident ray AB emerging out of the prism marking the angle of incidence on each surface. Let's do it. So this is the whole figure. You have to trace the incidence ray out of the prism. Now as you can see the angle of incidence over here is 90 degree. Therefore it will go straight into the prism. No deviation. Okay. Now my line is not straight but it will be straight. Now I will draw a normal over here. With respect to this plane. And if this is 90, this will be 90, 90 plus 30, 120, therefore this will be 60 degree. Because this plus this plus this will equal 180 degree. Now this whole thing will be 90 degree because this is normal to this plane. Therefore this will be 30 degree. Now the angle of critical, I mean the critical angle was given 42 degree. Therefore there will be no total internal reflection. The ray will go out of the prism, it will get refracted. Now this is denser medium, it is going into rarer medium, therefore it will go away from the normal. Okay. This is your angle of refraction. So basically this is the whole diagram. We move on to question 3 part A. Displacement distance graph of two sound waves A and B traveling in a medium are as shown in the diagram below. So you have a graph over here. Now, you have to study the two sound waves and compare their amplitudes and wavelengths. I will do this simply in the paper. You can see the wavelength of A, I mean the amplitude of A is much higher than that of B. It is double. Therefore, amplitude of A divided by amplitude of B will be equal to how much? This is 20 and this is 10 which is equal to 2 is to 1. So 2 is to 1 is equal to A is to B. Okay. Then you have to compare their wavelength. Now what is wavelength? The distance at which it completes a single wave is called the wavelength. 
therefore you can see that this is double of a so the wavelength of b is double of that of a so wavelength of a divided by wavelength of b now I'll take the wavelength of a as lambda because nothing is given over there and it will be 2 lambda because it is double so it will come to 1 is to 2 so the wavelength will be 1 is to 2 is equal to a is to b so this is your total answer moving on to question number b you have three resistors of values 2 ohm 3 ohm and 5 ohm how will you join them so the total resistance is more than 7 ohm that's very easy you can simply connect the three resistors in series 2 ohm 3 ohm 5 ohm so this is the diagram for the arrangement and you have to calculate the equivalent resistance resistance equivalent will be equal to 2 plus 3 sorry this will be 5 plus 5 ohm which will be equal to 5 plus 5 10 ohm so that's your equivalent resistance we move on to question number c now part one what do you understand by the term nuclear fusion now nuclear fusion is the process in which two light nuclei combine to form a heavy nucleus in this process a huge amount of energy is produced number two nuclear power plants use nuclear fusion reaction to produce electricity what is the advantage of producing electricity by fusion reaction now for the same mass used in nuclear fusion and nuclear fission a higher rate of energy will be produced in nuclear fusion so that is the advantage of producing electricity by fusion reaction a higher rate of energy will be produced moving on to d part one what do you understand by free vibrations of a body now free vibrations are the natural vibrations which a body exerts in the absence of any external force on it so that is called free vibration part two why does the amplitude of a vibrating body continuously decrease during damp vibrations now what is damp vibrations the periodic vibrations of a body of decreasing amplitude in presence of a resistive force are damp vibrations now there is a resistive force present in damp vibration that is why the amplitude keeps on decreasing the graph looks something like this so it keeps on decreasing okay moving on to part e1 how is the emf across primary and secondary coils of a transformer related with the number of turns of coil in them that's very easy emf in secondary by emf in primary is equal to number of turns in secondary by number of terms in primary easy part two on which type of current do transformers work very easy alternating current ac moving on to question 4 a part 1 how can a temperature in degree celsius be converted into the si unit of temperature now what is the si unit of temperature the si unit of temperature is kelvin so temperature in kelvin will equal temperature in degree celsius plus 273 so this is the way a temperature in degree celsius can be converted into degree i mean kelvin number two a liquid x has the maximum specific heat capacity and is used as a coolant in car radiators name the liquid x h2o water is the liquid number b a solid metal weighing 150 gram melts at its melting point of 800 degrees celsius by providing heat at the rate of 100 watt the time taken for it to completely melt at the same temperature is 4 minutes what is the specific latent heat of fusion of the metal let's start solving this numerical from calorie metric the power given is 100 watt the time is 240 seconds and the mass is 0.15 kg that means 150 grams now as you all know heat energy q is equal to power into time because p is equal to w by t therefore q will equal 100 into 240 joule which is 24000 joule 
okay now you all know heat energy is equal to mass into latent heat constant that means the specific latent heat of fusion of the metal therefore we calculate that the heat 24001 okay the mass 0 0.15 kg and we have to calculate the latent heat therefore divided by 0 0.15 is equal to latent heat which is equal to 160000 joule per kg so this is your specific latent heat of the metal this is the answer moving on to part c identify the following wires used in a household circuit number one the wire is also called as the phase wire now you have given the answer in the question live wire number two the wire is connected to the top terminal of a three pin socket the fat wire that means the earth wire d part one what are isobars now isobars are elements having same mass number but different atomic number same mass number but different atomic number d part two give one example of isobars well example potassium 1940 and calcium 2040 different atomic number but same mass number number e state any two advantages of electromagnets over permanent magnets now the advantages are i will give you three advantages number one you can control the magnetic strength i mean if the current increases the magnetic strength increases and if you decrease the current the magnetic strength will decrease second one it has a very higher magnetic power that means it can attract substances towards it very powerfully number three you can reverse the polarity of an electromagnet by just reversing the polarity of the current so that's all with electromagnets so guys with the end of section one i end this video here the next section will be uploaded very soon so stay tuned until then this is the reception signing off